Eduardo. He was my tour guide while I was in Merida. I believe the best way to learn about a place when you're traveling is to follow around a local. After spending some time following him around, I learned something. I think Merida is a little, well, weird. Now don't get me wrong, I like weird. What is weird to some may not be so weird to others. So what is weird? I think pugs are weird. Some people think I'm weird. I once ate milk bone in grade five. Eduardo is weird. He likes to recite a lot of interesting sayings his grandpa told him. En la vida hay que ser como los perros. Pateas tu mierda y sigues adelante. He also likes to sing like Pavarotti. So when I decided to take this year off, my original plan was to start in Mexico and end up in Ecuador in three months. I never left Mexico. Now some may find it weird that I spent so long in Mexico, and I often get asked, is it safe? Merida is actually safer than my home city of Toronto. And there are even direct flights here from Toronto. But what's weird is that if you don't pronounce Toronto right, nobody knows where you're from. Mexican accent, Yucatecan flavor. Okay? Toronto. <laughs> Let's start with the obvious. The beautiful pastel facades of Merida. Well, they make you hungry. The buildings look like cakes. And sometimes the buildings match people's outfits. Merida is ranked the second safest city in North America. But I found some cracks in this claim. And it's not the obvious ones. Now I've been to places in the world where there are no sidewalks. I'm no expert in sidewalk safety, but I can walk a sidewalk back home without a helmet. You just learn to walk like a penguin. But in Merida, it's these smooth ones you need to worry about. They're so polished, it's like walking on ice. And when it's raining outside, they are slipperier than a sled. You might want to bring crampons. So be really careful when you're walking the streets of Merida because you can get hurt. I don't want to do nothing. I, but I, I feel that I need to do something, but I don't know why. When I arrived here, Eduardo offered me a hammock. I'm like, dude, are you crazy? I had a perfectly wonderful king-size bed at his Airbnb. I didn't care that the Mayans have used them for over 2,000 years. That they're breezy on hot nights. That one size fits all. Or that his friend Nelly made it look like fun. I wasn't sleeping in the hammock. But then Nelly told me about this saying here, like when your friend calls you and asks you what you're up to, you say, pateando la pared, which means you're swinging in the hammock, hitting the wall with your foot, because you're just chilling out. So I have to tell you something. I'm not really the type of person that likes to sit around and do nothing, but pateando la pared, you're kind of chilling out, but then you're hitting the wall with your foot. It's like exercise, right? 
so I rode the hammock. And don't tell anyone, but I kind of like laying around and doing nothing. I kind of felt like a baby again. But that's not what's weird. What's weird is I'm pretty sure they came up with this dance putting away a hammock. Once upon a time, there was an overprotective father, and this little girl was his princess. But one day, she wanted to meet a boy in the park. He didn't understand why. So he asked, what for? She said, to talk. So he made these me and you chairs, so they could just talk, and nothing more. Who are you? You and me. Yes, era por aquí venía la gente a practicar. But that's not really weird. You see that celebrity dog Bart talking with dad in the me and you chair about what to have for dinner? What's weird is, he looks like a pug, but he's not a pug. And here's another love story. The Maketch is a love legend where a mine princess was forbidden to marry a prince from a rival clan. So a shaman changed the guy into a shining beetle that could be worn over her heart as a reminder of their love. They can live up to four years and they feed off the fungus that grows off wood. Now, if the man I was supposed to marry was turned into a bug and crawling around on my heart, I'd want a divorce. Allow me to introduce you to Pedro, the lizard. Eduardo told me they're not native here. Pedro and his buddies hitched a ride after a big hurricane. I asked him how he knew that and he says he reads a lot. And then I found his stash of magazines and it all made sense. I spent enough time in Merida to notice something about the people here. They're happy all the time. Whether they're just hanging out, working in the kitchen, eating chicharrones, waiting in line, delivering pizza, putting away their pug, and even when the cameras are rolling. It's shocking to learn that they have a history of violence. Merida's rivalry with their neighbors in Campeche now comes out in baseball. Baseball is a big deal here. Baseball isn't really a violent sport, except when Mexico and Canada played in the World Baseball Classic in 2013. Canadians aren't really violent, except when it comes to hockey. The Canadians were winning the baseball game and the Mexicans got mad at us and started a fight. What's weird is, if you're from Mexico, why would you get mad at a Canadian? Have you seen our winters? Snowbirds is the term used to describe Canadians that fly south for the winter. There's a lot of them here in Merida. They spend so much time here that you can give them directions with the names of the street corners. The main street corners have names. That's how directions were given back in the day. These names are attributed to landmarks or legends of these corners. Some of them, very few, even explain why, like Latucha, which is a type of monkey that if someone calls you that, it means they don't like you. Some of the legends are creepy, like this one about the man-eating condor. Eduardo is one of the few locals that has an explanation for almost all of them because he went to the library and looked it up. What's weird is, who goes to the library anymore? This is when you came from Chetumal or Nacerbe? This is the old one. No. This is the old one. 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 Eduardo once told me, The best way to know Merida is to leave Merida. Did he just say to leave Merida? Let's go! So him, Nelly, and I left to see the ruins like Uxmal. The 
the famous Chichen Itza. The beautiful pink waters of Las Coloradas, which is where salt is mined, and the pink color comes from algae and plankton that live in the water. The flamingos eat this, and this is why they're pink. When you see Nellie's photos, it's kind of obvious what she does for a living. If you've ever wanted to turn pink, you have to find another way because the water, it only works on flamingos. Valladolid, which was moved from its original location after Spanish settlers complained about the mosquitoes. Many. Okay, the only reason to go to Many is to eat at this place. One of the best meals I've ever had. <laughs> Nelly's hometown of Campeche. Motul. We also came here just to eat. Progresso Beach. Now don't tell Eduardo that I told you, but he went into the Gulf of Mexico here and rescued this girl kite surfing. What's weird is she kept kite surfing. Cenotes. The Little Toon Caves. Do you know what else is weird? Eduardo is also a stalactite musician. The magic town of Izamal, where everything is yellow. Eduardo was right. The best way to see Merida was to leave it. But that's not what's weird. What's weird is if you find the right spot in the ruins, it's better than singing in the shower. Ay, 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 ay. Canta y no llores. Porque cantando se alegra cielito lindo los corazones. Bravo. Here, here was the place where the meteor that killed all the dinosaurs fell. I had a hard time believing Eduardo. A giant meteor came down here and killed the dinosaurs? But then Veronica said the same thing. This place to do look is where the meteorite that killed all the dinosaurs. The cenotes have that shape because of that meteorite. And when you look at the cenotes, it does look like a giant meteor came down and made them. I'm gonna get Veronica to build me a house here. What's the chance of it hitting the same place twice? Everybody dances in the street in Merida, all the time, every day. This comes in handy when you're trying to work off all the delicious meals of the days of the week. That's right, there are traditional dishes here that coincide to the days of the week. Monday was popular laundry day, so pork and beans were easy to cook on the stove all day over a slow heat. There's even a gelato shop that serves pork and bean flavored gelato on Mondays. What's weird is, I didn't hate it. Tuesday is relleno negro because there's nothing better than staining your newly clean clothes with delicious black chamole. Wednesday is lentil stew. On Thursdays you have Zeke, which is shredded deer. But now there's a hunting ban, so don't ask me how I found this. It was changed to papazules after the ban. Fridays is a classic dish from Campeche, pan de cason. Or you can have pork pork chuk. Saturday is chocolomo. And of course, on Sundays, you want the none other delicious conchinita pibil. Because there's nothing better than pork fat after a Saturday night. It tastes like good times. <laughs> Queso de bola is Edam cheese from the Netherlands, which is used in a lot of cuisine here like Brazo de Reina, Queso Rieno, and the Marquesita, which was invented by ice cream maker Leopoldo Mena, who needed to sell something during winter. So how did a cheese from the Netherlands end up here? 
Well, there are a lot of theories. The one that makes the most sense to me is not that it magically washed up on shore or that a rich family brought it back from vacation. This region has a history of pirates. So it's likely that a ship headed towards the Dutch Antilles with a boatload of cheese got hijacked. They tried it and were like, let's put this in everything. Merida offers an incredible bounty of Yucatan's freshest produce. I ran a produce market for seven years and some of this I've never seen before. Like chaya, mame, fresh hibiscus flowers, Black sapote, which looks gross, but it tastes like a delicious caramelized persimmon. The central market can be daunting for even locals, so I recommend taking a market tour with Aaron, who's an American chef and lives here in Merida. She's buying sapote fruit here, which tastes like a brown sugary pear. Eduardo introduced me to this when I first arrived in Merida. He said, this is where chiclets were originated. I didn't believe him. Really? Oh. The bubble gum is from, from, this, from this fruit, or the natural one. This is Raul, an anthropologist who teaches Mayan culture here. He took his class on a field trip on how they make gum, and he sent me these videos. The white sap is collected from the sapodilla tree and it turns into gum, which they call chicle. A former president in Mexico by the name of Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana became friends with an American venture by the name of Thomas Adams and gave him a piece of chicle. And yup, you guessed it, Chicklets was born. Good luck trying to find some now. It was discontinued in 2016. Okay, that was a fascinating story, but did you see what Walmart was charging for chicklets? Yucatan is the birthplace of chocolate. When the Spaniards first tried it, they thought it was a bitter drink for pigs. But they brought it to Europe, added sugar, and the rest is history. Merida is home to Key Chocolat, which is ranked second in the world according to National Geographic Traveler. They use ancient Mayan traditions when making their chocolate. Here you must try the Mayan chocolate, which is served with a variety of local spices. What's weird is, the owners are actually from Belgium, but I guess they know a thing or two about chocolate. They invented pralines in 1912. Merida is the largest producer of the best honey in the world. It's made from the Melipona bees. You can eat it, spread it on wounds, wrinkles, it cures illnesses, and it's really hard to find here. I was only able to find the honey at this shop, but it does come with a certificate of authenticity, and it's not cheap. There's something I should tell you about the Melipona honeybee. What's weird is, the bees, they don't sting. Why don't they have mosquitoes that don't sting? Hey Sue, I don't ever remember you drinking Coke, but I noticed on your Insta stories that um, you seem to be drinking a lot of Coke. What's going on with that? I was drinking a lot of Coca-Cola in Mexico. But in Merida, the Coca-Cola trucks are everywhere. I've seen Coca-Cola trucks before, but never this many. See, the thing is, Coca-Cola in Mexico just tastes better. Something about the cane sugar and the water. Then I discovered these Yucatan Cheetos that are made here in Merida, and it tastes so good with Coke. The ones that come in a little glass bottle, they taste the best. I started to develop a problem, but apparently I'm not the only one with this problem. If you know the right people, you can get Mexican Coke in New York City and Los Angeles. There were so many Coca-Cola trucks, I kind of felt sorry for this truck. It was all sitting alone in the parking lot. 
Why? Yeah. You are asking me. Because I don't know we need sugar and it's delicious. I wasn't the only person to follow around Eduardo on his Follow Me Yucatan tours. After all, he is one of the best tour guides here in Merida. When I tell people he's a guru, no one believes me. No lo sabía. ¿En serio? No sabía. No sabía. <laughs> but really, he's such a guru. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have learned all these weird things about Merida. Like that strange symbol he's standing under. I could tell you, but it's way more fun just to follow him around on a tour. Mi abuelo siempre me decía, Hijo, los niños dicen la verdad. Los viejos dicen lo que hicieron. Y los pendejos dicen lo que van a hacer. Thanks for watching this episode of Turn Left Right Here. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe and the like button at the bottom of your screen. Follow me on the social media links below. Tap the bell to be notified of upcoming episodes. And please share with me your comments below.